So my name is Rodrigo. Um, I'm a software engineer, but uh, one of my outside work interests is uh, visual arts. Um, and also, uh, I, I like to play with creative coding, and I'm playing with these tools for a while, like processing, some of you guys may know, and also like uh, pure code. Um, and I also, I, I like to, uh, one of my interests is, uh, is like programming languages. I'm not a very good programmer, but um, I was looking for like a perfect scheme uh, to learn. Uh, and Rocket seemed like an awesome, like a scheme family programming language. And after reading uh, a lot of documentation, which is great, I came across Pict library, and I was fascinated by how like uh, building like functional uh, picture uh, uh, equations are, are super easy in Rocket. And I was like doing a lot of experimentation, and I had an idea to build like a non-trivial program myself. My first program in Rocket to build uh, to do like uh, visual arts, uh, also actually like generative art in Rocket, inspired by Pict. <laughs> So I want to just talk about like three uh, things in this presentation. Like I want to jump right into the demo so you guys don't get bored. And after that, I want to explain a little bit how, how I designed the system and my experience uh, as a uh, first time like Rocket programming, how I um, managed to go through the uh, macro systems and the functional programming and the type rack and all that stuff to make that work. Um, yeah, and then just share my experience with you guys. All right, so let me jump uh, right into the demo here. So this language is called uh, Stamp. I'm using the X, X, X uh, kind of a shortcut for language right now, but I'm going to be looking to uh, more parse, um, the uh, macro parsec uh, for, to look into like a, uh, like a special syntax for that. Um, so basically, this language is a declarative way for it to, uh, to define like a recursive uh, picture. So in this example over here, for example, I'm defining like a a Sierpinski triangle by uh, defining a shape, and then has a primitive over here called triangle. Just draw like a, a triangle, and then you define kind of recursively, calling the Serp shape again over here, and then defining a special construct that you can uh, you can tell uh, to draw Serp by using adjustments or transformations. So in this case, I'm just translating, changing the scale, changing the brightness a little bit, and that uh, recursively draws. So let me just run over here. There we go. And the system takes care of um, uh, pruning so that we don't go like uh, drawing infinitely. Uh, so you, uh, there's an, a maximum number of shapes that draw and then stops. So you can easily like define recursive uh, num uh, patterns. Here's another example here, very simple one with, uh, with comments. So defining a shape called X that draws a square, and then in college square we're going with some, uh, um, some adjustments over here, and then um, calling the shape S recursively with, uh, this is just a shortcut for rotation, translate, uh, scale, and brightness. Run that. So then you have this pattern over here. Uh, you can play with that. For example, let me define like a more rotation. Let's see what happens. So it's more tied up. I know I can try to even more and then maybe, I don't know, changing a little bit the scale here. So it's pretty cool for, you know, quickly experimenting and like defining art. It's a bit different there. I'm sorry about the resolution here. It's not great, but uh, yeah. Another example over here. This one takes longer to render, so I just pre-render. Uh, and I want to show another example here to us all. Uh, so one of the uh, Features of this language as well is that you can define a shape like here, for example, that has uh, you can you can send like uh, a parameter so that for example you define a shape, pass a number of branches, and then use the branches to call the shape again. Uh, I mean to define an adjustment, uh, and then I can for example use another parameter over here to call. Uh, 
the, uh, the, the, uh, the circle here with a different adjustment of returns. Another, prop, another feature of the language as well is that I can define uh, these numbers here, which is probabilities of picking that specific uh, shape to draw. So that I can have a, kind of a random, each time that I rerun, I have like a, one unique uh, work of art here. So I can do that as well. Um, let me show another example here. Yeah, this is a simple, very simple one. So in this case, it's just uh, translating a little bit and defining circles and all that. Um, yeah. So let me see if I have anything else I need to show. Okay. So I want to talk about my experience about like how I came about building this. Yeah, so, oh, another example here I haven't shown. So this one also uses like a probabilities as well. So define, there's a very low probability of like two over there to define, to like draw like a branches. So branching out. Otherwise, just go straight ahead. So just kind of trying to define how, how a tree may grow, for example. So this is, um, I defined this system. It was very like joyful to build using Racket because I can start by building layers of abstraction on top of it, uh, uh, core layer, and then kind of going more towards the language, which is pretty fun. So I started by defining like two core like functions. So I build this in a like, functional way, instead of using a data structure. So I just have a renderer, which it takes like a device context and gives it back like a, it renders on the device con the context and gives back like a list of renderers to continue, like a continuation of the renders. So therefore, the, uh, the actual drawer can decide to stop, you know. Uh, and then I have a shape, which takes one adjustment, which is a transformation, linear transformation plus color transformations. It gives you back a renderer. Uh, and that's pretty much the core of it. And you can program uh, using the core. Uh, but then I define some combinators, like join, for example, that can define the probability of picking a specific shape and then rendering that. Uh, and then on top of that, I use the macro system uh, of a rocket uh, to define the fine shape so that I have like a special kind of syntax for using that. And finally, something I'm still working on, which is the actual language of it, part of it, that kind of sets up the device context to, to like output a PNG and all that. So that I can actually have a lang and then just define exactly the declaration of the uh, work of art and get it, get it running. Um, and my experience with Racket is, like as a first time uh, user, is, was pretty positive. Like, I want to list that Dr. Arc is super amazing. Uh, it's like amazing IDE. Documentation is fantastic, like super helpful. The packages as well, like everything that I needed, you know, for a um, matrix library or a drawing library and all that. Um, the community also is pretty great. I got a lot of answers from the mail list. Thanks for that. The macro system is like amazing to you. It was super easy, like super quickly to define, to use the macros and see how it works. I actually, I thought about how it would like to, to be and then I just use the macro transformations to transform into my core uh, like language kind of thing. I use type racket for performance as well. And also like a good experience. And the profiling tools are super helpful as well. The contract profiling, also the uh, debugging tools. Uh, one thing was uh, that I, I think you, there's an area of improvement in this particular application is the performance of the matrix library. Uh, I think because of the contracts is, uh, checking is, is super slow if I don't use type racket. But then I use type racket, but I had to figure out exactly the boundary where I need to be on type versus type. So there are like a minimum number of calls, so that performance is also good. Uh, but anyway, everything turns out to be awesome. Uh, so that's all I wanted to share. And uh, please check it out the project. If you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thanks so much, Rodrigo. Any questions?
So your pictures were lovely. Um, let's say, for instance, that, that uh, I had a colleague who was uh, teaching uh, students using, using processing. Um, uh, can you speak at all to, because you, you, you said that you did, you had used uh, processing, uh, to differences that you see and essentially give me ammunition to help convince this person to take a look at the uh, racket and your stuff? Sure. Yeah, so process is essentially Java, uh, which is not bad, but you know, if you want to, uh, a lot of works uh, in terms of uh, visual arts and stuff, you, you kind of want to have a higher level of abstraction, you know, to define exactly what you want. Sometimes, for example, you're building a game, sometimes uh, you're building like a declarative way to define like a picture, and in Java, you, you don't have a choice, you have to make it like uh, statements, right? So a lot of uh, stuff in processing gets super hard to, to maintain, change, and refactor if you can get out of the low level team uh, to define your abstractions in higher levels. So having a syntax uh, like macros and stuff is super, super helpful. Uh, and the performance of Racket, uh, like Racket games and stuff, is on pair with uh, processing, I guess. Thank you. I think we've got time for one more question. like what you did. I, I, I've been tempted to do the same thing many times. In fact, I was looking. I, there's, uh, have you looked into context-free art? This okay. is a completely inspiring context-free. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I was thinking, well, gee, there, there ought to be a hash line context-free art. And then and you're, you're on yeah. the right path. For that. That's my goal, actually. Okay, so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe time for, for one more quick one. <laughs> So only people in this row are allowed to ask questions. Um, so another thing that could be really cool from the base that you have is to see how you can change the notion of drawing. In particular, I think that what you have is the foundation of doing um, some generative uh, 3D printing. So there's this awesome thing called Bricklayer, which defines some similar primitives to what you have. Um, and they can render it out. And they can also give you like a Lego building plan and um, a 3D printing thing, which could be a real, real fun thing for you to work on. Thank you. I'll check it out. Appreciate it. Cheers. Well, I think I don't speak just for myself when I say we would all take one of those, generate it into 3D. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your art, Red Vigo. Thank you.